So we look at Acts of ninth chapter and verse 12 it says, And have seen in a vision, I showed you in Job 33, 14, by the most I speak in dreams and visions, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight because the most I blinded him on the road to Damascus coming to destroy us. That was calling on Baha Shama Mashiach Kelly Shine the name of the Lord and said, Then Ananias answered, Master, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints who are the twelve tribes of Israel. You read Psalms 148 14. Defines who the saints are. We are people near to the most high. Praise ye the most high. At Jerusalem. He said, And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. All that call how? Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushai in the name of the Lord and Savior. Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushai in the name of the Lord and Savior. He have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. That's in the name of the Lord and Savior. But the master said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. You see? Before the Gentiles, because we are scattered among the Gentiles, that's the Israelites, and kings and the children of Israel. You see? For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You hear that? For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. For Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Not just is is uh this name a Mashiach or Yahweh Shai. It's how you gotta suffer for in the name of the Northern Savior. That's who he was going after. All of them that was Mashiach Shai disciples that was calling on the name of the Northern Savior. Understand this. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul. The master, even Yahweh Shai, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and he filled, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight for with, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached from Mashiach Yahweh Shai in the synagogues that he is the son of the Most High. See how he converted him? That's why I, I told you in Acts 17, he was all against him. But he changed him. Acts 17 30. In the times of this ignorance, the Most High winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, to ask for forgiveness. Right? So now. Let's look at um, verse 21. It says, But all that heard him, in Acts the ninth chapter, were amazed and said, This is what they said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, called on by some of my shakyah in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent? That he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. So he's rolling. Now he's been converted. He's rolling by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And they looking at him like, man, this dude doing this man is trying to fool us. He's trying to catch us up. That's what he's trying to do. Just him. It was because he remember he was slaughtering, threatening, and having people put to death. Bound up and put in prison for teaching. And rolled it in Baha Shama Mashiach was shot. But what he said, what Mashiach was shot, tell him. Verse 16 For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake, for doing all of that. Don't get it twisted. That judgment is something else. So they saying, hey, that's the dude that was having people put to death, working with the chief priests. That told the apostles, man, you better not come up in here with no in the name of the anointed Savior. They threatened him, threw him in prison for teaching in that name. So here it is, verse 23. And after that, many days, excuse me, verse 22. But Saul increased the more in strength 
and confounded the Jews which dwell at Damascus, proving that this is very Mashiach. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. Hear that? They took counsel to kill him. But their laying awake was known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. I got a, a breakdown on, you know, the persecution of the prophets. And he's as Saul is all up in here. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. Listen, but they were all afraid of him. What do you think that fear is? You know what I mean? Fear, being afraid of him. They feared him. When he came to Jerusalem, they, they feared him. And believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the master in the way that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Mashiach Yavushai. See, there it is right there. Baha Shama Mashiach Yavushai. In the name of the anointed Savior. You see? And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly Baha Shama Mashiach Yavushai in the name of the anointed Savior. And disputed against the, the, the Grecians. Hear that? Disputed against the Grecians. Greek speaking Jews. But they went about to slay him. They went about to kill him. You see that? So they went about to kill him. The Grecians. The Greek speaking Jews. Look, look, because you gotta understand, in the Roman Empire, right? But in the Greek Empire, when the so called white man came into power, why they call them Grecians? Like y'all call yourself. Gentiles now, African Americans, and all the other kind of names. I got 105 different identities of us, who we are. What's your nationality, brother? What's your race, brother? Hmm. A hundred, a hundred and five different identities. A hundred and five. Because look, why they call themselves Grecians? Look. Um, I'm going to go right to the point. Second Maccabees, this is the Greek Empire. We're in the Roman Empire, we're reading Acts. You know, you look at uh, Malachi, that's the Persian Mede Empire. You turn to that blank page, then you come into Matthew, the first chapter, that's the Roman Empire. So the Greek Empire is missing. And here it is in the Apocrypha that the Protestants took out. Why do they call themselves Grecians? Right here. 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. Neither was it lawful. 2 Maccabees 6 chapter, the 6th verse. Neither was it lawful in the Greek Empire for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. So they took away the laws and the commandments like they're doing now. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew, an Israelite. That's why they call themselves Grecians. Look, and he's, this is verse 29 of Acts the 9th chapter. And he spake boldly in the name of a Mashiach Yavashai, in the name of the Northern Savior, Bahashama Mashiach Yavashai, and disputed against the Grecians. Not no so called white people. They weren't dealing with the laws, that's commandments of the Most High. We weren't dealing with them. You understand this? It was, look. Go to Acts 2. Go back to Acts, the second chapter. Um, and. 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushai shall be saved, right? Who we say? Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. The Mashiach Yahushai of Nazareth is a man approved where? And by who? Of the Most High among you. Among the Israelites. Who? Ye men of Israel. Among you. Who do you? Ye men of Israel. By miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him. Where? In the midst of you. Mr. Who? Ye men of Israel. As ye yourselves also know. So, he wasn't dealing with nobody else. Prove it. Prove that he was dealing with all these other nations besides the 12 tribes of Israel. When you go through the first parts of these books that, that's writ, written by Paul, who we read about as his name was Saul, it tells you it's talking to the Israelites. 
So these Grecians are Greek speaking Jews, Israelites. Verse 29, and he spake boldly in the name of Mashiach Kevashai, Baha Shama Mashiach Kevashai, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. You see? So the Grecians went about to slay him, right? Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Got him away from him. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Most High. See, walking in what? The fear of the Most High. Walking in the fear of the Most High, being afraid and being scared of the Most High and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit were multiplied. Respecting the Most High utmost, to the utmost. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters. He came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia, the head apostle Peter. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, my shake of a shy power, make it thee whole, arise, take, make thy bed. And he rose immediately, and all that dwelt at Lydda and Saran saw him and turned to a Mashiach that was shy, to the power of the Most High, he was doing things of this nature. So now I want uh, to jump from. Uh, Saul to Peter. Now let's go to um, Acts the 26th chapter. We just about well, finished. I just want to reminisce over what we just read because, like I said, they wanted to kill him. Let's look at um let's go back a little bit so you see that uh now is now he's Paul. Once he was converted, he's Paul now, who y'all believe in. Over a Masha Kevashai. You don't even realize you you are believing in him more than a Masha Kevashai. But look, um look at uh Let's go to Acts 25th chapter. Because um, they brought Paul to King Agrippa and he ended up visiting Fetus. So um, let's see this. Let's start at verse 19. But had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one of Mashiach Kelbashai, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Paul affirmed to be alive, right? When he died on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days, <clears throat> and ascended to the right hand side of the Most High to make intercession for us, the Israelites. And because I doubted of such matter of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul was had appealed to be reversed unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Fetus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come and Bernice with great pomp and was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and principal men of the city at Fetter's commandment, Paul was brought forth. So here come Paul. They went and got him out of jail, brought him to him. And Fetter said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man? Upon whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. Jews, remember it said, Grecians sought to kill him. Now it says Jews had dealt with me, both Jerusalem, both at Jerusalem and also here, 
crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my master. See, you see how they call them master? That word, L-O-R-D. They made us call them that. It's coming from B-A-A-L. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write which seemed to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not withal to signify the crimes laid upon him. He says it's not right me to send his prisoner and don't know what crime he has committed. Then Agrippa, verse 26, chapter 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I, have, I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things where I am accused of the Jews. See, accused of the Jews, Grecians, Jews, Greek-speaking Jews. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life, listen, Saul's life, before he was named Paul, my manner of life from my youth which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, known, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. So Saul lived as a Pharisee, and now I stand and am judged for the Pope of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers unto which promise our twelve tribes, our twelve tribes of the nation of Israel, instantly serving the Most High day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that the Most High should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to Baha'sham or Mashiach, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, as Saul, your Paul, my Paul, <laughs> the one that wrote most of the New Testament, having received authority from the high priest, the chief high priest, from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, you know, when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. This is why I took you to Acts 17 and 30. Most I winked at your ignorance. But now I require all men to repent. For that day is coming. <laughs> and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them. Hear that? I persecuted them even unto strange cities whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday old king I saw in the way a light from heaven so now he's telling the story we read about this in Acts the ninth chapter he said I saw a light from heaven and above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them was journey with me and when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me. Remember, he was trembling. He heard a voice speaking unto him. And saying in the Hebrew tongue, y'all be talking about a, a bunch of shy spoke Aramaic and Latin and all that. When Mashiach was shy came back here, he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. What did he say? Saul, Saul, why presence thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. We just read that in Acts the ninth chapter. And I said, Who art thou, Master? And he said, I am a Mashiach Yavashai, whom thou persecute. Only Paul is telling what happened to him. Going to the road, on the road to Damascus, getting ready to go to persecute the Israelites. 
And I said, Who art thou? Verse 15. Master, and he said, I am Mashiach Yabashai, whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. So he had to go to the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, like he was, to open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness, from darkness to light. What empire are we in? We're in the Roman Empire, the so-called white man's empire. And you got wicked Israelites, like I said, all the way from the Greek Empire. When you go into uh, the Feast of Dedication, we go over that in 1 Maccabees. Wow, they were wicked Israelites. Wicked. That was in darkness. So by the time you look at the Greek Empire all the way to the Roman Empire, they had all those years, over hundreds of years, to be wicked as ever. And learn wickedness. And put flavor in wickedness. And allow our deeds to overpass the ways of the wicked. Teaching the wicked ones our ways. To open their eyes, he's saying. And to turn them from darkness to light. This is what it say. That's why you look at St. John, the first chapter, what it said. Turn them from darkness to light, right? Because it says, St. John 1 and 4, we'll start there. In him, Mashiach of Shai, was life. That's why he said, I'm the way to show you how to follow the truth, which is the laws of the Most High is going to lead to everlasting life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light is the commandments of the Most High. Listen, and the light shineth in darkness. He's in the Roman Empire. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Those that are ignorant to understanding what this Bible is talking about and dealing with what is written to receive the unadulterated understanding of the Most High's anointing spirit to be able to understand even this story. But see, it said, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Why? Because, oh man, that's, I'm trying to get it. Is, but I, it just keeps taking me somewhere that you gotta understand, okay, well, most I told Esau this, and y'all heard it before, Isaiah 47 and 5. Sit thou silent, he told him, sit silent, shut up, and get thee in the darkness, right? So when he go in the darkness, you can go to fast mode, and Isaiah 16 and 2, what did he do to the people? Isaiah 16 and 2, that's ignorance. Isaiah 16 and 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, ignorance shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, gross ignorance the people, you see? Gross ignorance the people, so now, that's when Esau came in the world. That's when we lost our identity of who we are as the Israelites. So that's why I say, I'm not sure what I in the Roman Empire, what he say? Like Saul's in the Roman Empire and Paul's in the Roman Empire. John 1 and 5, and the light shined up in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not, you see? So, that's why you see here in Acts, the 26th chapter, the 18th verse, to open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. Now, what's this light? Proverbs 6, 23. Proverbs 6, 23. That's why you poor choppy preachers out there not really called to really bring forth the understanding of this Bible. Because look, what's the light? Something you say we not under. Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law. But the Mosiah that he wrote with his finger, the work of the Mosiah is light. Hear that? And the law is light. It reproves of instruction on the way of light. But the law that the Mosiah wrote with his finger, the work of the Mosiah is light. That's why he said it. The darkness comprehended not. Because the ones that's ignorant to the laws of the Mosiah, they ain't going to comprehend this. This light. They're in darkness. Listen, going back to Acts, the 26th chapter, since Saul was so dedicated so diligent in dealing with killing and slaughtering and, 
and persecuting and putting those that believe on Baha Shammah in prison, in chains and shackles, in prison, our own people. Musa said that. And that's why he's an example of Acts 17 and 30. Because here it is. You read about it. But he got to suffer for what he did. But he was diligent in rolling in Baha Shammah Mashak Yabashai, who was against as Saul. Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. You hear that? From the way of the world to the light of the commandments of the Most High, the laws of the Most High, and from the power of Satan unto the Most High. You hear that? So they rolling with the power of Satan and not the Most High. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. See that? So we know Acts 5 30 to 31. Acts 5 and 30 and 31. Forgiveness of sins to who? It's real simple. The Most High of our fathers, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the Most High. Raised up a Mashiach Yavashai on the third day. He raised them up. Whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. He raised them up amongst the Israelites. In the midst of Israelites. And wicked Israelites that we read about. Hung him on the tree. Why they got him on the cross? They hung him on the tree. Him who was a Mashiach of Shai had the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Not to everybody, but to the Israelites. That's why verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles said, answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. Y'all better understand what this word is saying. Going back to Acts 26 and 18, to open the eyes of to them, to excuse me, to open the, their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. To turn them from being ignorant to being able to understand the law of such commandments of the Most High that He wrote with His finger. The work of the Most High that y'all saying we ain't got to follow. I'm trying to get people to go to hell with you. This show heaven right now, this your consolation right now if you don't repent and come back to Him. Because that's what you roll it with. And from the power of Satan. That's what you roll it with. Satan. And from the power of Satan unto the Most High. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's to the Israelites. Only because we're the only ones given the laws. And sin is the transgression of the law. So a lot of y'all say y'all Gentiles. So y'all figure that hey you, you ain't nothing but a. Uh, no different than the Edomites. Or the, or the Hamites. Or the. Elamites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Ishmaelites, all of them. Y'all all that combined. We've been under captivity on all of them. So y'all all that. That's why you call yourself Gentiles. And you're really the truly and truly the Israelites, man. But, what can I say? But he called them. You see what he did. You see what he was doing. But he still allowed them to have the majority of the New Testament written by who we just read about as Saul. Look. Verse 18. To open their eyes, the Israelites' eyes, the 12 tribes of Israel's eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light. Like our job is just like Paul's job. Going out amongst these other nations, because we scattered among all the other nations, to teach our people to come back to the fear of the Most High and repent and keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. To turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto the Most High. Because our people are rolling with Satan naturally and not even realizing it. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. You gotta come out of the power of Satan first. 
got to come out of darkness, ignorance. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Mashiach Oshai said. Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them out of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea. This is what he's telling the story that we've heard. And them, and excuse me, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to the Most High and do works meet for repentance, right for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. How about that? It say the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, right? But I thought it was the Grecians. I thought it said it was the Grecians that went about to kill him. Didn't it say that? Did we read that? In Acts the ninth chapter the 29th verse. And he spake boldly by Hashem Mashiach in the name of the anointed Savior. And disputed against the Grecians. But they who are the Grecians went about to slay me. Slay him. The slave Paul, right? But here, when he's telling the story, he said in verse 21 of Acts 26 chapter, for then, excuse me, for these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. So the Grecians are the Jews, the Israelites, Greek speaking Jews, Hellenists. In other words, remember I showed you how in the Greek Empire it was against the law for us to call ourselves an Israelite? So they wouldn't call themselves Israelites. Call, just like you call yourself American. Whatever name you come, I got 105 different identities of us. Actually, brother, what, brother, what's your race? So it is what it is. And if you say you're, you're, uh, you're an Israelite, brother, they say, no, I'm a Gentile. Are you a Jew or Gentile? What are they going to say? Majority of people going to say they're a Gentile. But you hear what it says, verse 21, for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, just in case you missed it. Acts 9, 29. What did they call themselves? And he spake boldly in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh that's in the name of the Lord and Savior, Baha Shama Hamashiach Yahweh and disputed against the Grecians but they went about to slay him. They went about to kill him. But he disputed against the Grecians. And they went about to kill him. Hellenists. Greek speaking Jews. You see. That have been all the way back from the Greek Empire. They had their children. They still call themselves Greeks. Call themselves Greeks. Call themselves Greeks. You know, they Grecians. You see. The Grecians went about to kill him. But here you see. And he's telling the story in verse 21 of Acts 26 chapter for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me having therefore obtained so you know the Jews are the Greeks the Grecians that we just read about having therefore obtained help of the Most High I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great saying none of the other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that a Mashiach of Shai should suffer, and that he should be the first that should be raised from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles, the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. And with that, I'm going to pause for the cause, and uh, I hope that was edifying. We'll continue to show you more of how the most I have mercy and grace and we gotta fear him and look at how we offended him to change you see Paul had to suffer you're gonna pay now you're gonna pay later but you're gonna pay all of us you're gonna pay one way or the other you're gonna bow down now you're gonna bow down later but you're gonna bow down and with that I'm out Shalom